Yes, it's finally here. It has arrived. Apple just announced the very first Macs using Apple's own silicon chips, replacing Intel chips. So is it everything we thought it would be? Hey, I'm Jerry. And let me just start with, yes, it is everything we thought it would be. This is going to be amazing. What they presented today at Apple's event for the new MacBooks and the new Mac Mini, yes, there's three new Macs with Apple Silicon, is going to be amazing. Performance-wise, efficiency-wise, it's gonna be great. Apple started the announcement running over a whole list of updates about how great they're doing, all these different things. We don't have time for that. We just wanna know about the new Macs. Just get to the new Macs, Apple. And they did, kind of slowly. They started off with a ton of jargon talk, jargon, jargon speak, jargon speak about the new M1 processor. The new M1 processor from Apple combines high performance and high efficiency into a single system on chip for Mac. It combines processor, IO, security, memory, all kinds of other stuff, and a five nanometer little tiny chip with 16 billion transistors. That sounds like a lot. It's got four high performance cores and four efficiency cores. And Apple says that those four efficiency cores are faster than the current 2020 MacBook Air dual core processors. Then of course it has an integrated GPU and a neural engine that can do 11 trillion operations per second, a secure enclave. And all of this makes something that Apple says in macOS Big Sur just makes everything buttery smooth. So all that power just for buttery smooth operations in macOS Big Sur, hey, it's worth it. Apple talked about the performance to efficiency rating or ratio. And if you imagine the performance on this side and the efficiency on this side, Intel went like this and Apple Silicon went like this. You know what, let me just show you. Here's their design that shows you the much better performance that you can get with Apple Silicon. The first Mac that Apple talked about using this brand new chip is of course the brand new MacBook Air. Yes, that staple Mac computer, which is their best-selling computer, has got eight cores in the M1, which is now 3.5 times faster than the previous MacBook Airs. It's also got five times better graphics performance with its integrated graphics built into the chip, and they said it's three times faster than any Windows PC in its class. It's got two times faster SSD. It's got up to 17 hours of battery life. It has no fan. Let me repeat that, no fan. So whether you're gonna be editing video in Final Cut Pro or playing games from the App Store, that M1 processor is just gonna slice through it and your fan's gonna stay quiet and relatively cool, I assume. So add all of that together, add better image signal processing for hopefully the better 720p camera, P3 wide color, eight gigabytes of memory to start, 256 gigabytes of storage, and that's the same starting price of 999 as the previous MacBook Airs. Now the differences between the 999 MacBook Air and the 1249 MacBook Air is gonna be one more additional GPU core, seven versus eight, and a starting storage of 512 instead of 256. Next up, Apple threw the M1 in the brand new Mac Mini, which looks the exact same as Mac Minis for many years now. And what you essentially get is what you get in the MacBook Air, except both options, either 699 or 899, have the same eight core, eight GPU M1 chip and eight gigabytes of memory, and then either 512 gigabytes or 256 gigabytes. Apple says that the new Mac Mini is three times faster than the previous Mac Mini and five times faster in graphics performance and has two USB-C ports on the back. So they're USB-C, Thunderbolt 3 and USB 4 and two regular USB A ports. And this thing can run the Pro Display XDR. And last, Apple announced a brand new 13 inch MacBook Pro. It comes in at the same three pounds as previous MacBook Pro 13s. It's got the new A core M1, which is about 2.8 times faster than previous MacBook Pros, a GPU that's five times faster, new image signal processing for the 720p camera, studio mics, and up to 20 hours of battery life. Yeah. So those are the three things that Apple announced today. Based on the information that they provided with performance to efficiency, I am super excited to test this out against my 2020 iMac and my 2020 MacBook Air. There's a couple of things I still wanted to know, and that is 720p cameras, which I said before. Unfortunately, they're not upgraded to 1080p, so hopefully the new image signal processing that they're talking about is actually better and can do a much better job than what we get now out of the uh, potato cams. One of my concerns after getting this iMac and thinking about the Apple Silicon Macs was going to be, can we add third-party memory to Apple Silicon Macs? And we can tell for sure now that based on these models, you cannot. The memory is integrated into the system on chip. So you are limited to only eight gigabytes or 16 gigabytes of memory. That means no third-party memory. 
There's also only two USB-C ports on the MacBook Pro. A little disappointing, I was hoping for four, just like the higher end MacBook Pros. And we also did not see a 16 inch MacBook Pro, which was recently rumored. That would have been amazing to get something even bigger and better and faster than the M1 chip in a 16 inch MacBook Pro. So hopefully maybe six months, we'll see. So what I ordered today was the higher end MacBook Pro 13 inch with M1 and 16 gigabytes of memory and one terabyte of storage and the base model M1 MacBook Air so that I can test that against my iMac and my MacBook Air and of course this iPad. Cause what does these new M1 Macs mean for iPad? That is a big question that I have and I can't wait to test them and see what it means for me and my workflow going forward. So be sure to hit subscribe to see all of that upcoming content. Let me know below, are you excited about these new M1 Macs? How do you think that they're going to perform against the 2020 iMac, the 2020 MacBook Air, or the 2020 iPad Pro? I can't wait to get my hands on these things and let you know all about them. So if you have any questions, you can follow me on Twitter at Jerry Schultz or drop them in the comments below and I'll see you next time.